Would you turn to 315 as we sing, Were You There? Page 315. John 19, 25 through 30. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was a set of vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon his up, and put it onto his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Sin and pierce through the darkness. 
Matthew 28, 1 through 8. And the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was lightning and his reign was quite as snow. And for fear of them, him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye see Jesus, which is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where he, the Lord, lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee, there shall we see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to meet to begin his disciples' word.
Luke 24, 9 through 12. And returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran into the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Remember, it was Peter who had denied the Lord three times before the rooster, cr rooster crowed twice that fateful night. Yet, Jesus in his mercy appeared unto Peter as he walked back from the empty tomb, all the while questioning what he had seen. The two witnesses on the road to Emmaus confirmed Peter's sighting. In Luke 24, 33 and 34, and they arose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered and them that were with them saying, the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. Even the apostle Paul confirmed this truth. He wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, five, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the 12. Jesus had extended his mercy and grace to Peter, the one who had denied him three times. And now Peter was counted as his friend. Sustainer, the beast and the birds hear that praise. Mountains and valleys still answer your call, but I speak the names that please you most of all. Twenty-four, thirteen through 32. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have with one another as ye walk, and are sad? 
And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. And now the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. And we trusted that it had been he which, which should have risen, redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also are for company, made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and brake, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures?
Jesus appears to the multitude. Acts 1, 3 through 5. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized by the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Acts 2, verses 1 through uh, 4 is actually the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were setting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And, and on my men servant and my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2, 25-28 For David said concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope, and you will have my soul, will not have my soul in hate, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence.
Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. King David, Israel's most blessed human king, said, Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my soul shall rest in hope, because thou did not leave the soul, not my soul in hell, neither did, wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Again, Acts 2, 26-27. This morning we've looked again at the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, and it is what God chose to tell us as holy men of God spake as they were moved of the Holy Ghost. But how do we know this account is true? How can we be sure that the Word of God in both the Old Testament and the New Testament is true? You know, many religions claim to have a holy book. What makes our Bible different? than their writers, writings. The first thing is, again, the writers in the New Testament declared that the Word of God is truth. It says again, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter 1.21 And in 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and, and for instruction in righteousness. But what if the other authors of the other writings made the same claim? Wouldn't that make them just as legitimate? Any human source claiming to be a source could be legitimate or they could be false. And besides that, the Jews did not believe in the New Testament, that it's the Word of God. They only believed in the Old Testament. Therefore, they do not believe the writings of Peter and Paul. They don't believe that they're inspired. So I tell you, for their sake, let's cast out everything written after Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. So everything written after Acts chapter 2. The second reason, again, that we know our Bible is more authoritative than any other scripture or any other writings was the fact that Jesus declared the Word of God to be true. Well, as Jesus was praying in the upper room, as we saw earlier, before He and His disciples went to Gethsemane, He called out to God and said, Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy word is truth. John chapter 17, 17. Jesus was declaring the Old Testament to be truth because the New Testament wasn't written when He made that statement. Even after His resurrection, He spoke to the men on the road of Emmaus and said, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Luke 24, 44. So Jesus said it, we would say, therefore it must be true. And we as believers believe that. Even the Muslims believed that Jesus was a great prophet and the only prophet that could not and did not lie. But then again, the Jews have been taught that Jesus was a deceiver. So let's throw out Jesus' own testimony as the Word of God. We'll eliminate that as well. The third thing, God the Father, Jehovah God, declares that the Word of God is true. It says in Deuteronomy 4.2, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 4.2 And King Solomon, again, the wisest king in Israel, confirmed God's own testimony when he said, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Add thou not to, unto His words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6. See, this takes care of the Christian, and of the Jew, and even for the most part of the Muslim. But what about the world, rest of the world's religions, or even the atheists, or the agnostic, or the spiritualist? They have their own books of religion and human wisdom. What makes our faith different from their religion? What makes our belief in the infallible, inspired, completely dependable Word of God different than any other belief system? Well, first of all, let me say this. Fulfilled prophecy. 
fulfilled prophecy. God's Word, the Holy Bible, is different than any other book written by man's hand because the author proved its authority by telling us events that would happen before they came to pass. Whether it was events concerning the flood or the rise and fall of nations and he gave them names or the judgment of Israel as they rebelled in the days of the judges or the sweeping away of the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel into captivity or the hundreds of individual declarations or promises whenever God spoke it came to pass only his great mercy would hold back his prophetic judgment if the people repented unfortunately that seldom happened God in His love and wisdom gave us detailed information about the birth of Christ, about His ministry, and about His death, all of which came true is exactly as He predicted. No other book written by man has that track record. Only the Word of God is the infallible, inerrant, inspired record of truth upon which the world can trust. But even the skeptic will turn his back to these truths because they believe it could have all been concocted or self-directed. Matter of fact, I've heard arguments when they said, when Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which is in Psalm 22, verse 1. It could have been planned of Jesus because after all Jesus knew the scriptures and on the cross he could have said what was written to try to make himself appear to be the Messiah. When Jesus knew he was going to die at the hands of the Jewish and Roman leaders he could have surmised that according to Psalm 22 7 they all they that see me laugh me to scorn they shoot out the lip and they shake the head. Well if he was going to be again killed or die as uh, one worse than a thief or a murderer, surely the crowd would have done that. When Jesus knew he was going to die, he may have realized that his death would be by crucifixion. They have pierced my hands and feet. Now understand, that was written a thousand years before Christ came, before the crucifixion method was there. See, we as believers know that these fulfillments are fulfillments of Scripture, but the world's religions, the lost, the atheists, could all say that this was part of Christ's deception. They could even declare that the resurrection was a hoax as the Sanhedrin paid the Roman soldiers to declare. The world can deny every aspect of the resurrection story. They can deny even the fulfilled prophecy. But the thing they can't deny is the change that takes place with the new birth. They cannot explain again why the apostles were willing to give their lives. They can't explain why the Christians in the church willingly laid down their lives for the resurrected Christ. They can't explain that change. The scripture says of those believers, Which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? And and have slain them which slew before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now the betrayers and the murderers, who have received the law of disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said behold I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran up upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And what shall I say more then? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jatheth, and of David also, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, waxed vigilant in fight, 
uh, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens. Women received their dead um, to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute and afflicted and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. <clears throat> Hebrews 11, 32-32. 38. How can they explain the changed lives of the apostles or of the Christians in the early church that were willing to lay down their lives for the resurrected Christ? How can they explain the willing martyrdom of millions through the centuries and even today that count their loss but gain for the excellency of Christ? And how can they explain the fact that Christ will never leave us nor forsake us. Never once will He turn His back on us. Never once will He leave us.
never leaves me. Nor forsaken. All right. I will sing of my Redeemer, first and the last. Let's stand together, please. Thank you for a great time in your house this morning. A time, Lord, of praise to you in your name for all that you've done for us. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you that this is a day that we as the church worldwide think about, again, the resurrection of our Lord. And so I just pray that you would help us to go out with the boldness and with the witness that we need. Lord, as others have gone before us, help us to share the gospel, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday to each of you. God bless you.